So before we go over mechanical energy, I want to go over the law of conservation of energy again, because it's just that important. And also it has something to do with mechanical energy. So remember, conservation of energy just means that energy can be created or destroyed, only transformed into like other different forms, right? Um, so we are specifically looking at the situation when potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Okay. Uh, but remember throughout this, the total amount of energy does remain constant. Uh, so the specific situation we looked at yesterday and are going to still look at today is those objects that are falling or rising. Okay. Uh, so we know that the potential energy at the top if it's 600 joules, then we know that the kinetic energy at the very bottom should get be, guess what, 600 joules, okay? And so basically the maximum potential is always equal to the maximum kinetic. Now here's something that I didn't show you in the previous lesson um, that I just want to because uh, I like to be sneaky. So that is this. We already know this, right? We already know that potential energy equals kinetic energy when it's at its maximum points. I cannot stress that enough, okay? So like at this point, potential energy and kinetic energy do not equal each other, okay? It only happens at potential energy at this point up here, at the top point, is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom point, right? Uh, so we know that potential energy is mgh. We know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So I don't think I really did this yesterday or last lesson with you guys. Uh, but if you look at that, what happens? What does it look like we can possibly do? Well, here's an idea. Let's divide both sides by M. Okay. Because say, just say that I want to get rid of mass on this right side. Okay. Those would cancel out. Yay. Let's say I want to do that over here as well, and I divided by m. What is happening? What happens here? That also has a mass that cancels out with a mass. So the funny thing is, if we did want to do that, there is actually a little bit of a shortcut, but it does make a new equation, okay? And the masses cancel out when we make those two things equal to each other, okay? And there we go, we get a new thing. Now you might be asking me, why didn't you tell us this yesterday? Um, well, first I just wanted you guys to get really, really used to the idea of maximum potential equaling maximum kinetic. Secondly, it makes me nervous because then you think that masses can cancel out in a different situation with mechanical energy pretty soon when they can't. So it still actually makes me nervous here. I'm still wondering if it's the right thing to do or not, but I do want to show you because that means that technically... I can solve these situations with kinetic energy converting to potential or potential to kinetic if I don't have the mass. Okay, so for example, we have here a rock being dropped over the surface of the edge of a cliff that is 30 meters above the surface of a lake. So we know our height is 30.0 meters. So we want to know what the speed of the rock is. So really, we're given one thing. So it's at first you're like, there's no way I can do this. But again, if you're like, okay, well, that means if it's at the very top, it has all potential energy. At the very bottom, it has all kinetic energy. So those are equal because, of course, they're the maximums. I know my potential energy at the top of the cliff is mgh. I know that my Kinetic energy at the bottom of the cliff is one half mv squared. And then if we do what we did just on the last slide here, if we divide both sides by m, then the m's cancel out here, okay? And so we get this new equation, this gh equals one half times v squared, or it could be v squared divided by two. Um, and then we can solve for velocity here because we have g. g is a constant, something that we've always had. Uh, and then we can solve for v. So I'm just going to make a new equation, but you can also plug in the numbers if you want to. But we're so close. 
So instead of multiplying by one half, I'm going to multiply by two, okay? Because multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So the opposite of dividing by two is multiplying by two. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Those guys cancel out. I get that two times G times H is equal to V squared. And of course I just want V. I don't want V squared, I want V. So I need to square root that. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That makes the squared cancel. And I'm left with V equaling the square root of two times G times H. Okay, I'm gonna take that up here because I'm running out of room. So just so you know, it's a little shortcut. If you don't have the mass, don't fret. You can actually still uh, calculate this, okay? So let's calculate this velocity. So G, remember, always 9.81 meters per second squared. And then the height was 30 meters, okay? So if I calculate that, I get 24. How many significant digits do I need? I need three. I only have one thing in the question. So there we go. So it's 24.3 because it's 24.26, but we're going to round that two up to three. And there we go. That is our final answer. So just by the way, that's a way to do one of those uh, maximum potential turning into maximum kinetic. If you don't have mass, you can actually still do it. And then at this point, if you ever want to use uh, this equation, which is all a big old mess right now, uh, go for it. You absolutely can do that. Okay. Let's move on to mechanical energy, though. That's what I really want to talk about today. So mechanical energy is a specific type of energy. It's the sum. What does sum mean? Sum means to add, okay, of potential and kinetic energy at any point along something's, you know, uh, motion. So that is called mechanical energy. It's constant, meaning the number's constant, but the way we get it isn't always constant, okay? So so this is mechanical energy right here. Mechanical energy is equal to potential plus kinetic. But of course that can look different depending on what point you're at, okay? So for example, at the highest and lowest point, well, let's look at our highest point right here. What's our potential energy look like? It's at its maximum, right? So we have the maximum potential energy. What is the kinetic energy at the top here? We always assume that the kinetic energy at the top is zero. Okay, at the highest point. So therefore, your mechanical energy there is equal to the maximum potential energy plus zero. So it's just the same as the maximum potential energy. Okay. But if we look at the lowest point, so make it all the way down here, is there any potential energy left at the very bottom of the hill with this biker? No, there's zero. Okay. But the kinetic energy there is at its absolute maximum because all potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy. So if I look at my mechanical energy there, it's zero for the potential energy plus my maximum kinetic energy. Okay. And so my mechanical energy is there is the maximum kinetic energy. Yet another reason why maximum potential energy is equal to maximum kinetic energy. However, I just have a question here. What could the mechanical energy look like right there? Okay, so I'm just going to choose a random value. Say the potential energy right there was 3 joules. Okay, what does that mean? It means that my kinetic energy down here is what? 3 joules. Okay, but what about a point right there? Well, I know my whole mechanical energy needs to be three joules because my maximum potential energy is three joules. My maximum kinetic energy is three joules. So therefore my mechanical energy is three joules. But that means here your mechanical energy could look something like maybe you have two joules of potential and one joule of uh, kinetic, right? Is that still equal to three? Yeah. 
go right here then, for example. What could the mechanical energy look like there? Maybe now you only have one jewel of potential, but you have two jewels of kinetic, okay? So just remember that mechanical energy is staying the same throughout, but it's going to have, a, you're going to have a different way of getting it depending on where you are um, along the motion, right? At the exact midway, halfway down the hill, guess what the mechanical energy is going to be? It's going to be half uh, potential. So half of three is 1.5 and it's going to be half kinetic. Okay. So that's really, really important for you to understand about mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the sum of the two. So as the bike goes down the hill here, it's basically, the mechanical energy is still three, but the way you get to three is going to be different every point along the hill. Okay? So that's what you need to know about mechanical energy. It is so, so, so important. Okay? So let's go over an example. We have a roller coaster and its passengers have a combined mass of 1,000 kilograms. So we know halfway down one slope, uh, the coaster is 20 meters off the ground. So obviously it was originally 40 meters. Um, and then it's traveling at 5 meters per second. So we want to know the mechanical energy of the roller coaster at this point. Okay, so... Uh, we want the total mechanical energy. So remember that is total potential energy plus total kinetic energy. We have enough information to find potential energy and uh, kinetic energy at both points, right? Because we have the mass right here. So here's my mass. We have the height, which is right there. And we have the velocity right here, okay? So if I look at my mechanical energy and what it should be, well, potential energy is mgh, right? And kinetic is one half mv squared. Looks like I can can't or er, calculate that. Now here's what I'm talking about. So many people want to cancel out these m's here because they see an m on this side. They're like, oh, we can cancel the m's. Those m's mean different things, right? This m here is just saying m for mechanical energy. There's no m to cancel on the other side. Don't, don't ever, ever, ever with this formula try to cancel out masses, okay? Unless you're like a math wizard. Unless you're like, I'm awesome at math and never get any questions wrong. With this equation, please never cancel mass, okay? Just just don't do it, please. Don't ever. Okay, let's calculate this. Mechanical energy. So mgh, so that would be uh, 1,000 kilograms plus g is 9.81 meters per second squared times h, the height, is 20.0 meters. Okay, there is my mechanical energy. And then I'm going to add uh, one half times mass, which is still a thousand kilograms, times its velocity, 5.00 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, if you want to do this all in one thing in your calculator, please do bracket a thousand times 9.81 times 20, close the bracket, plus bracket 0.5 times a thousand times five squared, close the bracket. Okay, that's how you're going to want to do it, but I'm going to still just calculate these separately just so you can see what the potential and kinetic energy look like kind of in this halfway point. All right, so there we go. So this actually isn't halfway because we're not half and half. So this, they were obviously estimating here, but it's not really halfway because then our mechanical energy would be half and half and it's definitely not here. There's still way more potential energy than there is kinetic at this point. Okay, and then I'm gonna add those together. That gets us a mechanical energy of 208,896.2 joules, but of course we definitely can't keep it at that. We definitely need to look at our significant digits. So here we have four, three, and three. So it looks like our final answer should be three. I know you're saying, but we did adding is, do we need to like look at how many decimals are behind here? Um, so here's the thing is we have a mixture of multiplying and adding. So just in that case, go with the multiplying rules, okay? So the multiplying rules trumps the adding rules, okay? So I need three significant digits here. 
So I'm going to have to put this in scientific notation. I'm going to have to take this at, uh, move it up one, two, three, four, five here. And I'm going to have to kind of cut it off there. So I should have 2.0, should I have 2.08 or 0 0.9? need 2.09. That 8 needs to round up to a 9 because there's an 8 after it. Times 10 to the, how many did I move it up before? And that's times 10 to the 5 because we moved it up 5 times. And our answer is joules, or our units are joules. There we go, that's total mechanical energy. Now remember, you do not have to write out this kind of step right there. You can just go from here to the final answer if you want. That's completely fine and acceptable. Please, please, please just be careful about how you're putting it into your calculator, okay? Put this whole thing in brackets. Put this whole thing in brackets. Oops, I forgot the squared. Please do not forget the squared. Okay, let's do another example with mechanical energy, but one that looks a little bit different. So here we have a 52 kilogram high jumper athlete. So there we were just given mass, okay. Leaps into the air in, a, uh, in an attempt to clear the bar. At the top of the leap, the athlete has a total mechanical energy of 5.5 times 10 to the 3 joules. So there's your mechanical energy and is moving at 9.25 meters per second. So there's the velocity. So calculate the gravitational potential energy of the athlete. So we have slightly different situation here where we actually have the mechanical energy and we have enough to find at least the kinetic energy, right? Um, so I'd say let's do that. Let's find the kinetic energy and then solve for the potential energy. Okay? So... Start with that. Uh, kinetic energy was equal to one half mv squared. Okay, so that's one half times the mass again was 52 kilograms times the velocity 9.25 meters per second squared. And if we do that, we get 2,224.625. I'm keeping all the decimals right now because I really don't need to worry about significant digits until my very final answer, okay? And this just makes everything a little bit more um, accurate. Okay, let's go back here. I want to be able to find potential energy here. So my mechanical energy, I got 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 3 joules equals my potential energy plus 2,224.625 joules. Okay, we need to subtract this guy from both sides. This cancels out. Uh, hopefully you know how to put scientific notation in your calculator. Remember, it's that E thing. But if you need to convert this into a regular number, so you, you just can also do that, right? That just means you move this decimal point back three times. So it goes one, two, three. So this is the equivalent of five, five, zero, zero joules. Okay, so you could, if you also don't know how to do significant, or sorry, scientific notation in your calculator, convert it to a normal number, 5,500, and then minus that 2224.625. Okay, so when I do that, I get a potential energy of 3,275.375 joules, which of course... I can't keep like that. I do need to look at my significant digits. And it looks like I'm going to need two because I have two, two, and three. So we take the least, which is two. So we're going to have to, one, two, move this up three places to be in between the three and the two. And that two is going to become a three because we need to round it up because there's a seven afterwards. And there we go. There is our final answer, okay? So that's how mechanical energy works. So remember, sometimes you have mechanical energy, you need to solve for the kinetic energy, their potential, so you can kind of go backwards here. Um, but that's what mechanical energy is. It's the sum of potential and kinetic. So there you go. Okay, so we're just going to do one more example. It looks massive, right? 
but I just want to reinforce it's one of those kind of questions that we as teachers would ask just to make sure you understand stuff because a lot of the answers to these questions you don't even need to calculate or anything um, it's really just understanding what's going on so we have an 80 kilogram diver has 7,848 joules of potential energy when he's standing on the 10 meter platform. So the first one we're going to ask is how much kinetic energy does he have right before he strikes the water? So that means that the potential energy up here is at 7,848 joules. So the question is how much kinetic energy does he have right before he strikes the water? Of course, we don't want to see when he strikes the water because that means in the water is exerting a force on him and uh, it'll you know there will be energy exchange and so before it exchanges energy with its other surroundings i just want to know what's the happening between the potential and kinetic what do we know about this we know that conservation of energy means that the final kinetic energy the maximum kinetic energy should equal to the maximum potential which is what he has at the top so therefore you know since maximum potential energy is equal to maximum kinetic, which of course is what happens at the bottom. That means that the kinetic energy at the bottom, right before he hits the water, is the same at 7,848 joules. See, so like I said, it doesn't ha really ha always have to do with calculating. It also has to do with just understanding the scenario, okay? So B, uh, we want to know how fast he's going right before he strikes the water. Okay, well now we actually have to look at that kinetic en energy formula and we're going to have to do some calculating, right? Because we know what the kinetic energy is now. It was 7,848 joules and we need to find the velocity, okay? Uh, so that's one half times M. M here, mass here is 80 kilograms. And then we need to find velocity squared, okay? And then we'll find velocity from there. So first I'm gonna multiply the 80 times 1 half. So I get 7,848 joules equaling 40.0 kilograms. I'm gonna get rid of the kilograms. We can get rid of the joules too, times V squared. Now what do I gotta do to get V squared all by itself? I have to divide both sides by 40. There we go. And that's 196.2. And then of course, in order to figure out just the velocity from there, we have to square root both sides because velocity is being squared now. I need to do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting, okay? So the final answer that I get is 14 point, wait, how many significant digits do we need? We had three here, four here, so we should use three. So it's 14.0. And of course, units for velocity are meters per second. And there we go. Well, here it would technically be speed because we don't care about the direction. So there we go. There is our speed of the diver right before he strikes the water. So that one was an actual calculation one. Keep going. How much mechanical energy does he have at the top before he starts the dive? So remember, at the top of the dive, so this is the diving board. Here's the water below. I want to know the mechanical energy here. So remember, mechanical energy is equal to potential plus kinetic. What is the kinetic energy at the top of the dive? It's zero. So therefore, if my mechanical energy is equaling potential plus kinetic at the top, uh, there is no kinetic energy yet, right? We just, it's really, the mechanical energy is all coming from the potential energy and the kinetic energy is zero. So therefore, mechanical energy is just equal to 7,848 7, joules plus zero joules, which is just 7,848 joules. So again, it's one where you just really need to understand the situation because uh, there's no calculations that need to be done. Okay, let's see if there's any other tricky ones like that. How much mechanical energy does he have at the bottom right before he strikes the water? Does mechanical energy change ever throughout this whole thing? It doesn't. 
Okay, so again, it's a trick question. Mechanical energy doesn't uh, change. Energy is conserved. Okay, and we know mechanical energy is constant. Okay, that's not the one changing. So therefore, mechanical energy, even at the bottom, is still the same. It's 7,848 joules, okay? Of course, we are going to go ahead and ignore air resistance, which in this case, really, we can. Like, it's, it, it does, he'll still actually lose a little bit of that energy to air resistance, but not a ton in this situation. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and ignore it for now, okay? All right, and finally, how much mechanical energy does he have when he, was, he is halfway down at five meters from the water? Well, does it change? What did I just say here? Mechanical energy is constant. His mechanical energy is still the same, right? So it might be half and half. So for example... If we know mechanical energy is equal to can, uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy, well, at this case, then halfway down, it might be half and half, and that's completely fine, right? So half of 7,848 is 3,924. So halfway through the motion, it's very possible that it has uh, half the... Um, potential energy and then half of it is coming from kinetic energy, right? So we can stay, say that, but at the same time, the mechanical energy is still the same. It's not changing. It isn't changing throughout the whole thing, right? The individual potential and kinetic energies are changing, but the sum of mechanical energy or the sum of potential and kinetic will always equal the exact same thing right? So if we have, again, our diving board and our water down here, and we know the potential energy or the mechanical energy here is 78, 48, because it's 7848 plus zero, then here my mechanical energy halfway through might be 3924 plus 3924, and then here my mechanical energy will be uh, zero plus seven, eight, four, eight, right? You always are going to get to seven, eight, four, eight in some way, right? Somewhere here in the middle here, we could have um, potential energy at 700, or so, sorry, 7,000 and kinetic energy at 848, right? So it's always going to add up to that. It's just the individual potential and kinetic that are changing throughout the fall, Okay, and of course, as it goes down, kinetic energy goes up, potential energy goes down, and they go down by the exact same amount at the same time, right? And that is really just what's so important for you to understand about mechanical energy, okay? And uh, that's it. That's what I got you to know. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, it's definitely a big concept and a big part of this unit. So um, please, please, please ask about any questions you have about this. Okay. Hope you guys have an awesome day.